Praise the Lord for allowing us to come together one more time to be in the household of faith, to be in the household of the Lord. Uh, the Lord said that my house should be called the house of prayer. So we certainly want to go before the Lord in prayer and uh, because we know that prayer changes things. Uh, prayer can help you through the thing and prayer can change the thing. So as we get our minds set on the Lord, uh, reminded of those who prayed for the Lord to do great things in their lives. They had a sincere heart. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, let us have a sincere heart uh, to see that the Lord will do all things. And the Bible tells us when we pray that we ought to pray in such a way that we are forgiving, pray in such a way that we are receiving of the Lord. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, if there's any particular prayer request uh, that needs to be made known, you can do it at this particular time. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, pray for the success of the service and also pray uh, for one another that the Lord will continue to bless us to grow in that unity and love that is connected to Christ Jesus. All right, we have this church to stand. And let it be our prayer. Oh, gracious Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, to say thank you and praise you and your goodness and your mercy. We thank and praise you, Lord, for your greatness. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Lord, that you allow us to come together one more time to hear of your word, to magnify your holy and precious name. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify each and every soul that is here on today and those that are tuning in. Lord, we ask you that you bless them in the name of Jesus. Remember, Sister uh, Cora, Lord, in a special way. Touch her body, Lord, and all others that are going through in their spirit, soul, and body. We ask you, Lord, that you move by your grace and by your power. And, Father, we ask you to grant unto thy servant the door of utterance in the name of Jesus and grant those that are here uh, an ear to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of the soul. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, we certainly thank God uh, for your attendance on today, uh, pressing your way, coming closer uh, to uh, a deal or a settlement on our AC in this place. Uh, we thank God for that. And um, uh, hopefully they'll be able to get it done pretty quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So in the meantime, we'll still uh, praise and worship our God and 
Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. So I want you to, to turn back with me over to the book of Ephesians, and we'll conclude that if the Lord say the same on today. Thank you, Lord. Talking about warfare, putting on the whole armor of God. And uh, Paul, he really put forth a sound message uh, to help us because we have to realize that we're often and all the time in a spiritual battle, in a spiritual warfare. We got many opponents, not, not only uh, our internal uh, opponents uh, that, uh, that oppo we oppose ourselves sometimes, and also too we got external and internal opponents. When I mean now talking about internal opponents, uh, we got people in the church that we that want to oppose us, and we have people in the uh, community, in the outside world, that want to oppose us. But we know that the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. And that which God gives has the ability to pull down all strongholds. And, it's, and God's weapons of warfare uh, shall not and cannot uh, be defeated. Uh, when you use God's weapons of warfare, you shall win every time. And um, in the book of Ephesians, it talks about um, what the, well, God's weapons are that are stated here. Not, and I wanna make this clear as well, that um, this is not a, an exclusive list of God's weapons that he gives unto us because uh, faith is a weapon. Paul doesn't mention, well, he mentions the shield of faith, but faith itself is a weapon. And um, um, uh, praise and worship is a weapon. And um, so there, this is just a compact list <laughs> of what weapons that we ought to use. And he used the weapons of truth. He really uh, uh, narrows it down to the word of God. That's what these weapons are. Uh, the girding your loins about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. And today we want to talk about uh, prayer, praying with all prayer and supplication. So we're going to move quickly, expeditiously down to Ephesians chapter number six and verse number 18. Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 18. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And it reads as thus, it says, uh, Praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and with all supplication. Then Paul includes himself and he says, And for me, pray that an utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And tonight we want to focus in on uh, prayer as a weapon, prayer as a weapon. Ephesians 6 and uh, 18, Ephesians 6 and 18. And uh, what I wanna establish in our hearts, what I wanna establish in our hearts tonight about this, this, this warfare type of prayer is that prayer it literally, if you think about it, it brings you closer to God uh, and, his, and his son, Jesus Christ. It brings you closer. Amen. And um, if you're going to have success, you have to be close to God. Uh, you cannot win this battle, win this war, walk in what God would have you to walk in if you're not close to him. Yeah, you, you have to be close to him and, and prayer brings you closer to him and, and also prayer 
it, it, it establishes, as you know, a line of communication with God. You have to have a line of communication. And the communication, there has to be a sender and a receiver and a message. Amen? It has to be a sender, a receiver, and a message. And it goes both ways. Uh, when you're praying, you have to uh, pray to God and, and communicate to Him a particular message. And normally those messages are our wants and our desires. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we just use God as a, a how can you say it? I can't even think of the word I want, but, 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 but as a grocery store, you know, we just use them as a shopping mall, you know, to get what we want, you know, but it ain't about that, you know, and, and, and as you grow with the Lord, you realize, uh, like Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, amen, but thy will be done. And as you mature in grace and grow in grace, you start praying more so the will of God as opposed to your wish list. Uh, what you desire. But you know, God ain't, uh, oh, I was going to use me some slang here. I was going to say, God is not tripping. I'll say it that way. God is not tripping about your wish list. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He's not, you know, he's, he's a big God. He can handle it. Thank you, Lord. But, but, but as you grow with God, as you mature with him, your, uh, your prayer uh, language and your prayer uh, requests should change. It should be more so on the lines of the will of God. Amen? Of the will of God. So we should send God a message. And then in turn, uh, God will communicate to us a message. Amen? And you have to be open and receptive to the message of God. I'm talking about being drawing close to him, drawing nigh to him. You have to be open to his message and be ready to receive it with the intent to obey. God, God moves on your behalf if he sees that you have a broken spirit and a contrite heart with the intent to obey his word. The scripture says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, uh, and thou shalt uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy might, thy, thy soul, and thy strength. Amen? But the key is to hear. Amen? You want to hear the voice of the Lord. And, and the Lord will make his voice known to anybody. Huh? To anybody. That scripture that says that the Lord heareth not sinners. Uh, that If you read, you got to read the whole context of that scripture. I believe it's in chapter, uh, John chapter 9, I believe. 931? Thank you. You got to read the whole context of that scripture. Jesus had literally healed an individual and, and opened his blinded eyes. And then they were calling Jesus a sinner <laughs> because he did it on the Sabbath day. And, and they were disputing uh, the blind man that got healed. He said, doth the Lord hear uh, sinners? The Lord doesn't hear sinners. You know, so he was defending his, his position uh, concerning Jesus as the one that they called a sinner, uh, turned around and healed him. So he was basically saying that uh, Jesus can't be a sinner uh, because he healed me. Uh, he delivered me. Uh, so we have to put the scripture in context. God hears sinners. Uh, he hears, and, and Jesus said himself, I came not to save the righteous, but I came to save the sinners. Uh, I came to save them. Amen. To deliver them. And we were all sinners. Uh, you know, I need God to hear me. <laughs> I need, no, you need the Lord to hear you. Uh, especially if you're in sin. Uh, trying to come up out of it. Uh, that would defeat the whole purpose. Amen. That would defeat the whole purpose. Thank you, Lord. That, that, that why Christ came. He came to save the sinners. To save the lost. And notice, he said, a broken spirit... Uh, and a contrite heart, he will in no wise despise. People normally that have a broken spirit have committed some trespass, uh, committed some type of sin, fell short uh, of the glory of God, and you're trying to get back into his graces. Amen? So, so you want to be, you want God to hear you, and you want God 
uh, you want to be able to hear the Lord. Amen. And when you hear the Lord, you hear him with the intent to obey him. Amen. Uh, if you if you hear, if you if you operate uh, with the Lord with the intent to obey him, he'll give you more. You'll be blessed uh, in all your deeds. God will deliver you. God will help you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But if but if an individual comes to God in prayer, uh, not with that proper intent, but just go through the motions, uh, uh, and, and God tries you and tests you out, and you're not hearing him, uh, then hey, you know, he's not trying to make communication with you because you, you're not opening the lines of communication with him. Yes, Amen. It makes things difficult. Y'all know yourself. When people don't uh, uh, take your advice, you stop giving it. Huh? Don't you? <laughs> or you ought to. <laughs> they ain't listening to you. Huh? Uh, uh, what sense does it make? Why waste your breath? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. People ain't you. They, they come to you with the same problem. <laughs> Y'all for, forgive me. People do that. They come to you with the same problem, uh, the same issue, uh, and you've already uh, discussed uh, the solution a thousand times, so to speak. Uh, and you know, sooner or later, you're going to just, just listen and move on. Amen? Same way with God. Uh, if you're not applying that which God gives, uh, it, it, it's, it's a one-sided uh, communication. And therefore, uh, it's not effective. Amen? We want to be with God effective. And there's another word uh, that comes intentional. Amen? When you're serving God, you want to be intentional about what you do and what you say. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, so prayer, then, it brings you closer to Jesus. It brings you closer to him because you, you need to be close to him. And, and when you pray, it, it helps uh, uh, for the transforming of your mind. Uh, when God gives you information and when you pray, uh, it, it, it transforms your mind. Amen? It renews your mind. It, it gives you the strength that you need to carry on. So, so notice what I say. When you come to God, uh, you develop a closer relationship and then you get renewed. Amen. That's, that's what David was saying in the 23rd Psalms. Huh? Uh, 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 the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Look at that close relationship. The leading part. Amen. Now notice. He said he restoreth my soul. Uh, when you come to the Lord in prayer, he can restore your soul. Yes, sir. Now, now, why is that important? Because sometimes we get beat down all the day long. Amen. The enemy takes, takes, takes hits at us. Amen. And, and it's not uncommon for you to be uh, battered <laughs> uh, by this, uh, the raging sea. And, and you need some help. Amen. And you can come to the Lord and so that in prayer, so he can renew you. Amen. So he can restore you. Yeah? So that he can revive you. And then, then when you come to him in prayer, because it's a close relationship, because there may be some issues and some problems that you may have, you can in prayer cast all your burdens upon him. Yes. Amen. Casting all your burdens upon him. There's no reason for you to be carrying around burdens. Amen. Hallelujah. Burdens that are not related to the Lord. Hallelujah. If it's, if it's a burden that, that's trying to bring you down, trying to destroy you, occupying your mind, uh, uh, and, and, and destroying your prayer life, destroying your, your godly life. Amen. Uh, then you should cast that upon the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. And you do that through prayer. Prayer is essential. Hallelujah. To the worshiper. Prayer is essential to the child of God. It's necessary. Hallelujah. So, so, that, so that I don't have to carry around excess anxiety. Hallelujah. That's what the scripture and what Jesus would, he taught. Hallelujah. In the, in the, uh, uh, the book of St. Matthew talked about uh, 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 be anxious. Well, he didn't say that there. Be anxious for nothing, but and that's the essence of it. Be anxious for nothing. 
but with prayer and supplication. Amen? Uh, uh, why be anxious? Why walk around nervous? You got a lot of people walk around nervous about everything. Huh? About everything. And they, they try to make you nervous. Huh? Uh, oh, the light bulb went out. Oh, 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 we're going to have an electrical fire. Uh, uh, just make you nervous. Huh? Oh, 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 you, you know you only got a half a tank of gas. Don't you think you better go get you some gas? Huh? Huh? You, you, you know. Huh? Huh? You know what can happen. Huh? 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 Things like that. They try to make you nervous. Uh, the Lord said, put the, 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 the fearful <laughs> from among you. Hallelujah. At least they make you fearful. Amen. So, so people that, that, that don't pray, they carry around a lot of anxiety. Amen. Because the Lord through prayer knows how to settle your spirit. He knows how to give you confidence. Uh, hallelujah. When, and, and, and notice, when you tell the Lord about your problems, you can get up. If you've got a relationship with him, you can get up from that prayer knowing that you've done something about it. And you told somebody in whom is able uh, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Uh, you've done it according to God's righteousness. And that gives you a peace. Amen. That gives you a peace that passes all understanding. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. My God. Why, why carry around all those issues when you can take it to the Lord in prayer? Yes. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. Hallelujah. So, so it brings you closer to him. He's able to transform your mind and you're able to uh, relieve your burdens. Amen. You're able to relieve your burdens. Yes, Lord. And then also, uh, he's able to give you strategies. Yes. He's able to give you strategies on how to deal with your current situation. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Prayer, prayer is good. Uh, and, and, and that's why I say you got to come to God with the intent to obey. Because when he gives you a strategy uh, to, uh, to overcome your present situation. Uh, and you put that into motion. It's backed by God. Uh, it has to work. You follow me? God will make it work. <laughs> uh, you ain't got to wonder about will it work. Huh? Yeah? And you don't have to wonder if it will work. Huh? Thank you, Lord. If you receive it from God, it will work. Huh? That's the confidence that we have in him. Huh? And now, notice. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Notice. A, a lot of people, a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I could, if I could go uh, and do that or, or, or talk to that person or, or deal with that situation. And they're saying that from a perspective that they haven't had a contact with God. Uh, when you have contact with God, God builds you up. Uh, uh, he encourages you uh, and he gives you what you need internally. So that you can be able to overcome yeah. what you need to do externally. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So, so it makes sense that you don't feel that way now because you haven't plugged in. Uh, once you plug in, haven't you been in a service wherein uh, the anointing was high? You heard a good preached word. There was singing going on, worshiping going on. And you felt like you could leave out that place to leap over the walls and run through the troops. Hallelujah. Why? Because you plugged into him. Hallelujah. It's different. Hallelujah. When you plug into him, he changes the mindset. Uh, he changes the atmosphere. He elevates your faith. Uh, he encourages your heart. Uh, and don't, don't let him mess around and give you a vision. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, of what it can be. And when it when the change will happen. Yeah. If you plug in, then you'll get more information. Yes, if you plug in, you'll tap into more of the power. Yes. Uh, you'll tap into more of the anointing. Yes. Uh, and if you tap into that anointing, it'll destroy every yoke. Yes. Uh, it'll lift up a standard. Hallelujah. That come shot. Uh, it'll lift up that standard against them. Hallelujah, my God, my God. So, so, so it's not about how I feel coming in, but it's more so how I feel coming out. Father, <laughs> because your God is able. I said your God is able. 
I said, your God is real. And he's the only one that can. Hallelujah. So, so why go here? Why go there? Just go to him. Amen. Just go to him. Huh? I know mama got some good advice. I know daddy got some good advice. I know my brothers and sisters got some good advice. Uh, and hopefully they're giving you advice about the Lord. But 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 if, if, if they ain't around, just go to him. Father, just why why? Why waste your time? Yes, sir. Amen. Why waste your time? Thank you, Jesus. Why waste your time? Thank you, Jesus. Why waste your time? And don't get me wrong. God wants us to talk to one another. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He wants us to communicate with one another. Amen. But he doesn't want us to leave him out. Right. Right. Amen. We have a tendency to leave him out. And that's when we get into more of our problems, our troubles. I, I call them problems. That's problems and troubles mixed together. <laughs> that's made a new word. <laughs> Amen. And that's what happens. You know? Thank you, Lord. So, so when we when we go to Jesus and 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 we go to Him in prayer, we draw closer to Him because now here we go. He knows our thoughts. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. He knows our thoughts, and the Lord is not. Ashamed of your thoughts. When you bring him your thoughts, it ain't like something he didn't know already. Amen. Uh, that he's never uh, heard of. A lot of times we embarrass or you uh, uh, we embarrass by our thoughts, especially if they're wicked. You walk around with we walk around sometimes, let's be honest, with some wicked thoughts. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And 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 with those wicked thoughts. Sometimes we may feel embarrassed. But the Lord already knows. Already knows. Huh? Yes, sir. So why not go to him? Because he already knows. He knows your thoughts. He knows your thoughts are far off. Before you even think the thought, he knows what you're going to be thinking. Huh? So, so, you know, armed with that kind of information, you should never be ashamed to come to the Lord. You with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord. In fact, it makes the Lord mad. Uh, uh, when I say mad, uh, upset, <laughs> angry, I use that word. Uh, uh, when we don't come to him. Yes. Amen? I had to get on my children uh, several times, because they still do it sometimes, but they're grown now. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. But, but, but sometimes, you know, they go to all their friends instead of coming to me or their mama. I'm like, well, why are we the last ones to find out this going on? You know, why, why, why are we the last ones? Why come you didn't come to us first? Uh, well, y'all you, 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 was going to be mad. So what? I'm mad at you anyway. <laughs> so what? I ain't going to kill you. Uh, I want to help you. I'll get over it. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so, so I said that to say this. We should go to the Lord first. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes people say, well, I didn't try everything. I'm just going to pray. Huh? That's, that's wrong. Huh? The first thing you should have did was pray. Yes, huh? not, not using it as a last resort. That's when we get into trouble. Using it as a last resort. Amen. God does not want you to make him laugh. He said, have no other God, what? Before me. Amen? So, so God doesn't want you to put another God before him. Make him first. Make him first. Amen? Now, now, he knows our thoughts. He knows our desires. The Lord knows your desires. Amen? So he knows if you got good desires... He knows if you have bad desires. Yes, sir. And, 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 and either one does not uh, negate his relationship with you. 
You follow me? You understand what I'm saying? Just because you got bad desires does not mean that you should not come to the Lord in prayer. Because he can straighten them out. Huh? The Lord is able to straighten it out. You got a desire to kill somebody. Don't you need some help? Huh? You got a desire to do some evil. Huh? You got a desire to do some evil. I thought you bring that to the Lord. Say, Lord, be honest. Lord, you know I got this desire. And I want to carry it out. I've already made a couple steps uh, to, to make it happen. Uh, but Lord, but Lord, I, 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 I need your help. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need your help. Uh, 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 wouldn't the Lord be happy with that? Yeah. Don't you think the Lord would help you? Yeah. So, because so, He knows, uh, He knows your infirmities, He knows your weaknesses. In other words, He knows everything about you. Y'all, yeah. why not go to Him that created you, designed you, and know everything about you? Yes, sir. Amen. And has your best interest at heart. <laughs> Honor, the Lord has our best interest in heart. Amen? Thank you, Lord. But, 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 but why do we neglect it? Why do we neglect it? You know why? I'm going to tell you why. One reason why is because we think we can handle it ourselves. And we self-righteous. Huh? We think we can handle it ourselves and we self-righteous. You follow me? And, and, and notice the word of the Lord. The, uh, God offers his help. He offers his help for a reason. <laughs> because he knows that you're weak. Huh? He knows that you'll give in. Amen? Amen? He created the devil. And he created him with, with the knowledge of knowing that, that you can't overcome him without God. Yes. You follow? You can't defeat the devil yourself. You can't even defeat yourself yourself. Huh? People who stop smoking, they can stop smoking for six months. But some hit them, boom! They back smoking. They can stop drinking for a minute. Uh, but something hit them, boom! Especially the stronghold. Uh, you can stop fornicating for a little while. Uh, some hit you. Uh, some come up against you. You can stop lying for a little while. Uh, and, and the enemy sweep that pot. Uh, and you see where, uh oh, if I tell this lie, hmm, I can get what I want. And I'll just repent. See, that's, that's the enemy. Follow? I was watching, I was watching uh, a little TV show my wife had on, and I was sitting there looking at it, and the grandmother was getting uh, the children to a place where, you know, to show them a, uh, a wedding uh, venue. And, you know, she, she lied to both of them to get them there. And then, and then when they got there, they said, what you doing here, what you doing here? And they said, Grandma called me. And then Grandma showed up and said, oh, I just told a little white lie. You know, see, now, now that's, that's teaching, you know, that, that I can tell a little white lie as long as it's for the good. You follow me? That's, that's bad doctrine. Huh? The enemy, the enemy, that's the enemy. Huh? That's why you got to watch. Amen? Ain't no such thing as a little white lie. A, no, a, a, a good lie. <laughs> you follow me? Amen. Amen. So we got to watch. And the other thing uh, is that when we come to the Lord, we're going to get into the scripture in a minute. But I'm trying to lay this foundation. When we come to the Lord in prayer, the Lord is able to convict our hearts through the spirit. You need your heart convicted. Yeah. Yes. Amen. If you don't, and I want you to hear me here. If you don't have a sustained, ready, uh, 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 a sustained daily prayer life, your heart will get hardened. Uh, even with the Holy Ghost. 
If, if you're not allowing God to convict your heart on a regular basis through prayer, you'll become, you'll become a, a, a hardened to sin. An example, I'm going to give you an example. David. David was a worshiper. David wrote the Psalms, a great portion of the Psalms. David was a follower after God. But David allowed himself to get distracted. And he stopped his worship life. And he stopped his prayer life. Amen? And through that process, he, he, he didn't realize he was sinning. When he, 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 he looked and saw Bathsheba. Huh? Saw her taking the bath. I believe, my, my belief, uh, that, that, that was position. I believe she positioned herself, but I don't know. But don't, 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 don't quote me on that. Amen. Don't, don't say Pastor Quinn is preaching that, because I don't know. <laughs> but, but you know, it was convenient. Huh? And, and, and David saw. Huh? And if he was praying, uh, if he was worshiping God, that would have convicted him right then. And he wouldn't have went further. But because his heart was not convicted, he went further. Told his men to go get her, bring her to the house. Huh? Now, when she walked in the door, if he was, if he was praying, and if he was anointed huh, at that time, he, he, he would have saw her and said, oh, this is wrong. I can't do it. I can't do it. Then he went a little farther. Laid with her. Had her pregnant. Huh? You would have think that he would have went to the priest and said, oh, oh, this is what I did. And, and, and I want God to forgive me. No. Why? Because he wasn't worshiping at that time. He wasn't praying at that time. So, so, so he was oblivious to his own actions. Got pride in him. That, that I'm the king. I can do what I want to do. I can have who I want to have. And then when she did, uh, disclosed that she was uh, 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 pregnant, David said, oh, I got to do something. Huh? So, so he starts devising a plan. Oh, what a tangled web we be when we practice to deceive. Huh? Got more involved. Why? Because he wasn't allowing God to convict his heart. He wasn't praying. He wasn't seeking God. Got deeper and deeper into sin. Huh? I'm committing my multiples of felonies. Huh? You follow me? When you don't, when you don't seek after God. And you don't allow God to convict your heart on a daily basis. Yes. You'll fall deeper into sin. Yes, Lord. And y'all know the rest of the story. I ain't got to tell y'all the story. Then, then, then after David had Uriah killed, uh, you think that that would have been something to David. Amen? But, but that didn't. So God had sent the prophet to David to bring to remembrance what he had done. He was still trying to serve as king, but he was wicked. Amen. Out of step with God. Why? Because he did not pray. He did not seek God. He stopped. Amen. His, but his heart could not get convicted because he was not seeking after God. You got to seek after God, beloved. You got to have a regular prayer life. You can't live this life without having a regular prayer life. You gotta let God convict your heart. Amen. And then, and then when 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 that whole scenario happened, and 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 the prophet said that David, thou art the man. God know the story. Huh? Then that's when David started to repent. Amen. That's when he started to repent and wrote that beautiful song. Lord, wash me. Huh? Cleanse me. Notice what he said. Lord, created me a what? Clean, Clean heart. heart. And do what? Renew a right spirit within me. David's heart had gotten dirty. David's heart had gotten hardened. And his human spirit had got out of joint. Why? Because he stopped worshiping. He stopped praying. 
He stopped seeking after God and not allowing his heart to be convicted by God. What are you saying, brother pastor? That, that, that if you can go a, a, a minute in sin, that's a minute too long without repenting. Huh? And if you, if you had a, a, a sustained regular prayer life with God, you realize that Lord, I, I, I cuss, but I want to come to you in prayer. I got to do something about my, my cussing habit. Yes. You follow me? If you, if you, now I want y'all to hear me. If you, if you can pile on sin and still come to God, then that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. God will deal with your heart through prayer to, to, get, to get you to get things straightened out. Amen? You want to be upright before God. You want to be straight before God. And God, with all your proclivities or all of your, your issues, God knows about them. Amen? And, and he's, he's determined to help you through it. Y'all with me? Yes, now, hallelujah. Now let's go back to our scripture. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We in the book of Ephesians. We in the book of Ephesians, chapter 16. Paul is saying, oh yeah, Ephesians 6, verse 18. Thank you. Paul is saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So Paul is saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So let's tackle that just for a moment. When Paul is saying here, praying always, he's saying, uh, pray at every time. Pray at every time. Pray at every time. And he's saying, pray at every time with all prayer. What he means there is, there is no just set one type of prayer. There are many types of prayer for many types of situations. And you should pray all the time. Yes. We're using different types of prayer. Follow me? Take one type of prayer. I'm just, I'm just looking, just thinking here. Hannah. Hannah was being mocked and ridiculed because she did not have a son, right? And instead of Hannah acting unseemly and doing wickedly, she went to God in prayer, amen? In prayer so that, so that she could be delivered of her reproach and so that she could bring forth a son. And her prayer is, is, is unique in this respect that, that she, 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 she made a vow unto the Lord. Saying, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. That's a type of prayer. <laughs> Amen? But that's connected with a vow unto the Lord. And, 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 and Samuel that's who she had, was one of the righteous men that ever lived in the Bible. You follow? And uh, 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 she prayed. And her prayer literally was, uh, it inspired Mary's prayer. If you read Hannah's prayer and Mary's prayer and put them side by side, they, they have a lot of similarities. You follow me? 
Because uh, 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 Mary, when she found out that she had uh, was having Jesus, she prayed. And one of the greatest similarities, that's probably why she was so inspired by it, because she knew she was having a son for the Lord. Just like Hannah. Hannah had a son for the Lord. Huh? Now, if Mary wasn't a student of prayer, she wouldn't have recognized that. The Bible is written for us to recognize situations that we're in and learn how to pray. Huh? Learn from, from those who, who, who got their answer from God. Learn how to pray, please. Uh, 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 study their prayers so that you can pray the same. So your prayers can be effective. You want your prayers to be effective. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. There's a lot of things that need to go into your prayer. You can't, James, he taught us when we pray, we can't pray uh, to, to want to consume things upon our own lust, we ask amiss. Huh? Thank you, Lord. So, so when you pray and seeking after God, you can't uh, just uh, do willy-nilly, uh, ask for uh, 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 things that, 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 that are lustful, that are evil, and expect God to answer. God is not going to answer prayers like that. Amen? You're just wasting your time. Huh? When you when you spend a time with God, you want to be effective. Amen. You want to be effective. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when we're talking about Paul says, he says, pray always. Now, he's literally talking about praying at all occasions. Literally, every minute decision that you make, God wants to be involved through prayer. Literally. I want y'all to catch this. When, when God delivered the children out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt, and took them over into the wilderness so he could take them over to the promised land, God said, I'm going to go with you. He said, I'm going to go before you. Amen? In other words, God was saying to them that I, I want to be involved. God wants to literally be involved in our lives. In everything. Everything he wants to be involved. And the things that you keep God away from are the very things that will destroy you. God wants to be involved. And he wants you to notice, acknowledge him in what? All your ways. So that he can do what? Direct your path. God wants to direct your path at all things. Lord, help me to brush my teeth. <laughs> Lord, help me to cook this meal. Huh? Lord, show me how to wash these clothes right. Lord, show me how to, to, to talk to my brother right, my sister right. Uh, Lord, go before me. Lord, you know I'm a little nervous right now, but, but Lord, I got to go to this hearing, and I want you to be with me. I want you to help me. Help me. Uh, 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 you, you in negotiation, they want you to buy a car. You praying, Lord, Lord, don't let them cheat me. Uh, don't, let, don't let them cheat me. Uh, Lord, uh, touch their mind. Give me the better deal. Help me. Huh? In everything you do. Huh? In everything you do. Lord, help me to keep my mouth shut. Help me, Lord. Help me. Lord, you know I'm about to say this, and I know it ain't, and I know it ain't from you. I know who the author is. And it's not you. Lord, I need you to help me. Huh? Follow? In everything. Everything God wants to be acknowledged. I was I was in a conversation. Good thing it was. See, God is good. 
I had just preached about prayer on Sunday. And, and on Monday, the guy asked me a question. He said, well, it was two guys. The guy, one guy said, well, Frank, um, uh, they kind of like, uh, you know how uh, Jesus, they tried to entrap Jesus when them Pharisees said, see, he's got together, trying to entrap him. Uh, that's what I felt like. He was trying to entrap me. Uh, but the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me get trapped. Right. <laughs> so I went in there. They said, come here, Frank. I came in there. I went in there. They said, now, pray. Pray. You're a man of God. Pray. Um, uh, is it okay for an individual just to walk around every day, all day, and pray in their mind? I said, yes. You know, it's, that's, 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 that's a form of prayer. And that's a form of, uh, of, of, of continually being in his presence. Because when we don't uh, acknowledge in our minds that we're in God's presence, we get into trouble. It's like, it's like fasting. You go on a fast. You ain't been on a fast in years. And you go on a fast, and your favorite dish is put before you, and you start eating. And you're like, oh, 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 I'm on a fast. Because you haven't consecrated yourself uh, and, and realized that you are constantly in God's presence. But, but, but when you, that kind of prayer, that's what God wants when he says pray always without ceasing. To always realize you're in the presence of God. Amen. That you belong to him in everything that you do. And, and the other guy said, oh, wait a minute, Frank. No, 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 that ain't true. He says, what about the prayers when you, when you, when you uh, 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 are going through a, a struggle, going through a fight, and, and, and you're praying for God's deliverance? Now, that's prayer. I said, true, that's prayer as well. But there's different types of prayer. <clears throat> Follow me? They tried to trip me up. Uh, but they didn't know who they were dealing with. You follow? Yes. Uh, when you study God's word, you know that, that, there, that there's different types of prayer. Amen? God wants you to pray always to acknowledge him so that you can consecrate your mind so that you can realize you're always in the presence of God. Amen? And that God is with you. To help you, to deliver you, to counsel you. And as long as you realize that you're dependent upon him, he'll lead you and guide you. He'll stop you from getting into some of the trouble that you get into. Some of the words that you speak and say. I would say be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rap. When you realize you're in the presence of God, uh, you act different. People act differently when they come to the church than when they do when they leave the church. Yes, Lord. People act differently when they're in my presence uh, than they are than they do when they're in other people's presence. Yes. They say things different. I always meet the representative. <laughs> you follow? Y'all with me? Amen. So, so, so let's talk about these prayers, what, this, what he's talking about. He said, praying always with all prayer. Notice how he read, wrote it. Praying always, and then he says prayer again, with all prayer. And that prayer there is just talking about the different forms of prayer. You got to have an arsenal in your, in your, in your uh, weapon tree to go after and to achieve the blessings of the Lord. So he's saying, pray all times, on every occasion, in all seasons. Now I said the word occasion, in seasons, purpose. There's, we walk through different occasions, uh, different events that happen. I'm calling those occasions. Then, you know, we also have seasons. 
There's a season wherein I feel close to God. And I have no problem praying. But then there's seasons where I don't feel like I'm close to God. Should I stop praying? Does he stop listening? No. He's just as close as he is when I feel him. I'm just going through a different season. You're just going through a different season, which represents a different testing. God is trying to do something effective in your life to bring you to another level. So even though you may not feel him, don't stop praying. Even though you may not see activity happening in your life, don't stop praying. That's just the season. That's just the time. And seasons change. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That's a season. They shall mount up as wings of an eagle. That's, that's a season. They shall run and not be weary. Huh? That's a season. They shall walk and not faint. That's a season. Throughout those seasons, God is with you. Amen. Notice, he said, I'll never walk. Leave me nor what? Do you believe that? He don't forsake you in any season. Amen? So don't forsake prayer in dry seasons. You draw down to God, he'll draw down to you. If you go through a dry season, realize that God is still the same. And the season will change. Amen? Let me say this as well. With God. With God, every season bears fruit. With God, every season bears fruit. How that's possible is because God is the author of it. And, and every season you go through you go through it with a purpose. And, and, and with God, you always learn the purpose, which is the fruit. With God, there's never a season without bringing forth. So whatever season you're in, you may say, well, Pastor, why are you telling us that? Because I want you to know, whatever season you're in, God is able to bring forth in that season. He's able to make you prosperous in that season. Yes, sir. But God, all things are possible. Y'all yes. with me? Thank you, Jesus. Now, when we're dealing with prayer, because, you know, people, people, people find it difficult to pray. You know, we think that I gotta have this big eloquent prayer. That's not that's not what God is looking for. God is not looking for the multitude of words, you connecting verbs and, and adjectives and nouns and pronouns. God ain't looking at that. God judges the heart. <laughs> That's it. Amen. And and the effectiveness of your prayer depends on the sincerity of your heart. One man just said, "Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner." Smote his breath, went home justified. The other man had this long prayer, "Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner." <laughs> Father, so 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 people who you see pray effectively and long, they practice that. Huh? 
they practice that. They develop a relationship with the Lord. And they realize uh, 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 through their prayer life that God kept adding to them and, 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 and they, they receive and they give unto the Lord at the same time. That, that comes to seasoned individuals that give their life to prayer. You follow? It's a difference. It's a difference. Now let me say this. That, that when you see the necessity of God, it'll change your life. A lot of people stay in the same rut, have the same station in life, because they don't see the necessity of God. When you see the necessity of God in your life through prayer, you get in a different press. You see things a different way. It's like, it's like, it's like air and breathing. Somebody trying to take your last breath, you'll fight for it. When you understand that somebody's trying to interrupt your life with God, you should fight for it. Even the more so. Because if you die, uh, uh, if man can't kill you now, uh, uh, he said, fear the one that can kill you and cast your body into hell. Fear him. Fear God. But you know, see, 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 people, they don't, they don't, they don't see the necessity. You gotta see the necessity, your lifeline, as the deer padded after the water brook, so padded my soul after thee, O oh God. When you when you see the necessity, you 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 make you make room for God. You won't allow him to be pushed out. And you'll be consistent with him. Consistency. Predictability creates stability. Predictability creates stability. Predictability creates stability. When, when, when you can predict your move with God, It'll, it'll cause you to be stable. In other words, I know I got to pray, so I'm going to have a prayer life. And you, and you stand on that, you'll have a stable life. You will always be up and down, sometimes level to the ground. Amen? You have joy in your heart when there's no joy around. Ooh, that's a poem right there. <laughs> You'll have it. Thank you, Jesus. You'll have it. Hallelujah. But you gotta, you gotta look at stabilizing your life. You ever been to a chaotic household? Walk in the door. What the heck happened in here? It's unstable. No rules. No order. When you come to God, you gotta have some order. <laughs> I'm teaching up in here. Come to God on a consistent basis. You mess around, come to Him on a consistent basis at a regular time, your life is about to change. Some doors is about to open. Amen? He's about to shut the mouth of some game sayers. Huh? He's about to anoint your head with oil so that your cup can run over. Just be consistent. I'm going to say it this way. Today's Wednesday, right? Be consistent Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. See, won't your praise be different on Sunday? Guaranteed. All right, now, talk about prayer. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in all seasons, with all kinds of prayers. Now, 
I'm going to tell you these types of prayers. There's worship and praise type of prayers. And I thought about getting scriptures to illustrate my point. But you know, I don't want to do everything play. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, 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 just know that this is the kind of prayers you should be at, uh, putting in your arsenal and find out where you can find you some uh, 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 praise and worship type of prayer. And those praise and worship type of prayers are similar to our, our devotionals, what we do. It brings you closer to God, brings you in his presence. Then there's uh, petition and uh, intercessory type of prayers. And those are the, the prayers that we're generally used to, asking God for something, petitioning God for something. Making your request known, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. We do that. We make those kind of prayers. And, and you know, like I said, there's, there's a manner in which you can make those prayers to be effective. You've got to find out through your relationship with the Lord what doth the Lord require of thee to make your prayers effective. And you get that and understand that through prayer. Then there's a supplication type of prayer. And that supplication type of prayer is the prayer that, 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 that you see yourself in need. Where the scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace. That you might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. See, we ought not uh, neglect God's throne. He says, come boldly. That word boldly means to come with confidence. <clears throat> now, that, that, that scripture there isn't just talking to righteous folk. It's talking to sinners as well. Come with confidence. Amen. Knowing what God has done for you through Christ Jesus. Come with confidence. Believing in him, trusting in him, so that you can obtain mercy. Uh, there it is. You want God to have mercy upon you. And then once he has mercy upon you, you can, you can find grace, God's strength, to help you in your time of need. When people neglect God's altar, uh, neglect his throne, they're neglecting their, their, their help. God wants to help us. Amen? God is not against you. God wants to help you. God wants to deliver you. But you've got to be able to come to him in prayer. You've got to have a prayer life. Got to have it. Got to have it. People that don't pray won't be anointed. The anointing follows prayer. Can I just say something? Amen. Sometimes <laughs> the anointing is flowing. And you see some people just sitting there, dry as desert dust. Yeah. You know why that is? They're not, they haven't been praying. They haven't been seeking God. It's a tail sign. Even, even, even you get anointed, even sinners, when they come into your presence, should feel that anointing. They should feel a difference. They should feel something. There should be something about you. They won't be able to put their finger on it unless they know something about you, of who you're talking to. They should, they should say, my, my, my. But people want the anointing, but the anointing comes at a cost. Comes at a price. 
Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to sacrifice? It takes a sacrifice to get anointed. It takes a sacrifice to get anointed. Feel the anointing. And you know, to be honest, I know preachers when they get up and preach, and I can tell whether or not they've been in his presence, or they haven't. Why? Because there'll be no anointing. If you're anointed, you can preach about collard greens and cornbread. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God will take that word, move it. Folk come out there, did you hear that preacher preach? He preached about collard greens and cornbread. What'd you get out of it? I got a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That's the seed out of the mouth of God. That's the spirit. That's the anointing. You can feel it. Anointings destroy yokes. It undo the heavy burden. That's the reason why you got to pray. The devil yokes you down. That's his job. You got to get that up off of you. You got to get anointed. If you want to get anointed, you got to stay in his presence. You got to call on him. And then when you get anointed like that, then situations and conditions, they don't bother you the way uh, they do if you're not anointed. You see stuff different. You praise him different. You worship him different. Amen? All right. Now, uh, uh, Thanksgiving. There's a prayer of Thanksgiving. Man, when God does something for you, you need to know how to go before him in prayer and thank him. You never say thank you, it'll, it'll slow down your blessings. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. God wants you to thank him. Amen. And that's a weapon of warfare. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is what? Good and his mercy does what? Endure forever. So you gotta add that to your arsenal of prayer. That a prayer of thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You should, I'm gonna be honest. You should spend one of your times in prayer not asking them nothing but just saying thank you. Huh? Just saying thank you. You know what they taught us? They taught us. Uh, 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 just come to the Lord in prayer. Think about all the things that He's done one by one and start naming them and saying, Lord, thank you. By the time you do that and get up, boy, you go, woo! You have a triple anointing. You realize how valuable the Lord is to you. You realize how good the Lord has been to you. When you start to look back over your life uh, and start saying, Lord, I thank you. Huh? I thank you for bringing Lord I forgot that you brought me out of this You brought me out of that Lord I thank you uh, When I was dead in my trespasses and sin Oh Lord I thank you I could have been dead Lord I thank you Could have been gone Lord I Lord you healed my body Lord I thank you uh, come up on, that brings, See how that brings in the anointing that brings us some power right there. Hallelujah. Because God never wants you to forget. He never wants you to forget about him. When he told the children, when I bring you over to the land, don't forget about me. When you got good and plenty, don't forget about me. Don't forget about your God. And when you start remembering his testimonies, through prayer, yes, that ignites a fire within you to, 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 to use like you put no more armor because you remember your God and, and, and you remember his testimonies. That gives you more courage. Yes. That gives you more boldness. Yes. Now these things only really work for those that are really in it to win it.
You see, there's some people that, that come for the fish and loaves. But there's some that's cut from a different cloth. That's here to serve him. That realize I can't live without thee. I can't move without thee. That realize, Lord, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I need thee with every hour. I need you, Lord. See, those people who act differently. Shandai Masha. Uh, they come with a praise. They, they come with a worship. That's different. You know what Jesus called them? He called them hirelings. That's different from a hireling. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. When, when, you, when you put all your eggs in one basket, when you put everything in the Lord, you need him to come through. Don't you need him to come through? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you confident he'll come through? Do you know he'll come through? Do you believe he'll come through? Hallelujah. So then we should be like Juanita Bottom. I don't mind waiting. <laughs> I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Uh, I know you'll come through. I know this is just the season. And while I'm waiting, I'm not going to murmur. I'm not going to complain. But I'm going to thank you. Hey, come on, son. Uh, you got to say, Lord, I thank you. When that, when that grumpy spirit come upon you to murmur and complain, that's when you need to hit your knees and just, and just start naming your blessings one by one and just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. I, I, I lift you up. In prayer. Hallelujah. And God will help you. He'll, he'll start hitting that rewind tape. Yeah. He'll show you. He'll show you. That's the type of prayer. Lord, I thank you. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for doing this. I want to thank you for doing that. Hallelujah. Then you know, you get so deep into your thank you and say, Lord, I thank you for this test. I thank you for this child. I thank you for what I'm going through right now. Hallelujah. Hey! And don't, 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 don't start shouting. <laughs> don't start praising them like you're thinking. Hallelujah, my God. You'll see something break in the atmosphere. That's why Paul, that's why Paul said use all types of prayer. So you can get some breakthrough in your atmosphere. Hallelujah. We need breakthrough. We need deliverance. Huh? We need strength. We need power. And all that comes through prayer. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. We need conviction. Uh, we need standing in the house. Uh, we need holiness in the house. Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Hallelujah. And, 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 and I know we bring it to the physical house. But your personal house should be called a house of prayer. Hallelujah. No way should the enemy be binding you up. No way should the enemy be holding you down. No way should the enemy be talking to you. And, there, and there's no rebuke. Hey, come on, shop. There's no Satan get behind you. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People who pray, they can walk through hell and how walk. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People, people that don't pray, you see a difference with them. Everything bothers them. Huh? Next thing you know, they're cussing. Huh? They fussing and cussing. Huh? That's a that's a type of worship to the devil. Huh? Murmuring and complaining. It's worship to the devil. That's why God got them in the wilderness. If they would have prayed, they wouldn't have got that calf. 
Huh? When Moses, they thought Moses was taking too long. My gosh, you're not getting the whole revelation. They should have been praying for Moses to come back. <laughs> they started murmuring complaining. He's taking too long. Huh? And then they, then they made a calf. Huh? And said, this is the God that brought us out. This my God. You see, when you don't pray, huh, one sin leads to the next sin. Huh? That made God mad. He told Moses, get down here, Moses. I'm about to, I'm about to get him. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. And God did get him. Thank you, Lord. He had him crush up that cow, made him, made him drink it, huh? put it in some water, they drank it. Thank you, Lord. And then God, God, God called the righteous on one side who didn't get with it, and those that got with it, he slew them. He killed them. Father, why? Because they wouldn't pray. They wasn't seeking God. They was believing to their own understanding. You follow me? Another thing, my God, we about to, another thing, see, the reason why they should have been praying, because when they was down there in Egypt, they learned a lot, a whole lot of bad habits. Huh? And they, they learned how to make an idol of God. Who taught them how to make an idol of God? The Egyptians. Huh? They learned those bad habits. How, how do you know you need an idol of God? The Egyptians. Huh? We come out of the world. Huh? And we come into holiness. We come into the church with a whole lot of bad habits. Amen. That got to be broke. Huh? And the only way to get those things broke is through prayer. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? You probably got some bad habits right now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The way to overcome those bad habits is through prayer. God knows, it ain't no sense in hiding. God knows about it. Uh, you can hide it from me, you can hide it from your brother or sister, but you can't hide it from God. All things are open and naked. Why not bring that thing to God? Amen? Get it destroyed. Amen? That's God. They didn't do that. Got in trouble. David stopped praying. Got in trouble. Father, Moses stopped praying when he got angry, hit the rock when he saw the, uh, spoke to the rock, got in trouble. Father, Jesus, he facing his greatest hour of temptation and did what? He prayed. You can be facing your greatest hour of temptation and what should you do? Pray. When they asked Jesus, well, Jesus asked his disciples a question. He said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Y'all remember that, right? And uh, y'all know the story. Then Peter, when Jesus told him down below that, Jesus told him that uh, son of man going, you know, is, it behooves him to suffer, give his life as a ransom, right? Then Peter said, be far from me, Lord, that you should do this. Jesus looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You savers the things to be a man and not of God, right? So Jesus, uh, I was, I was, the Holy Ghost was bringing this to my remembrance. Jesus had his mind made up that he was going to go through. Right? But uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, notice his prayer. Father, if there be any other way, uh, remove this cup. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now I'm speaking of Jesus' humanity. At one point, he was gun-ho. Let's get it done. And 
when the hour of temptation came, I'm not saying he wavered, but you can see the change. Follow? What got him through the change? Prayer. Jesus had a prayer life. Before he chose his disciples, he got up a great while before day. Right? Jesus prayed throughout the scriptures when he got ready to, to raise Lazarus from the dead. He prayed. Amen? You got to be consistent in prayer just in case you fluctuate. We human. We fluctuate. We can be strong as an ox today. Huh? But tomorrow, my faith can wane and wax. I need to build it up. The way I build it up, I build it up on faith. I build it up in prayer. Another case in point, we about done. Look at Elijah. Elijah was a praying man. He came against all those prophets and he prayed, said to God that answered by fire, let him be gone. He let them false prophets go first, then huh? they, 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 they called on their God. He said, call him a little louder. Huh? Huh? He may be on vacation. Thank you, Lord. Maybe he can yeah, get Call him a little louder. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And no answer. Then when he prayed, fire came down from heaven. Licked up the dust and burnt up the rocks. I ain't never seen such. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And, and God answered him through his prayer. Strong in the Lord. The next scene. You see, Jezebel heard about him. Said, I'm going to kill him. Huh? Elijah got scared and ran. He hid himself. God had to deal with him and build him back up. Follow? We change. But who does the building? God. Who builds you back up? God. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your bride. When my faith is weak, what? Keep me. What? By your side. Huh? You want to be kept by the side of the Lord. Lord, when my faith is weak, always let me see. That's why you. That's why you gotta. That's why you gotta give, do those Thanksgiving prayers so you can always see. You gotta see that the Lord is doing something for you. Always doing something in my life that the Lord has done. Don't neglect your prayer. Your prayer life. A lot of people neglect their prayer life. Don't neglect that. Now, now the other types of prayer. I got to go. I got five more minutes. I didn't think I was going to go the whole, the whole thing. Because I didn't have a whole lot of scriptures on paper. I got that scripture on the inside. <laughs> Hide the word in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I love the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord. Don't y'all love the Lord? Hallelujah. Go to the Lord of faith. Debbie said something to me the other day, made me laugh. She said, you know, you want to preach and praise <laughs> at the same time. And that's what I want to do. I want to preach this word and praise him at the same time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice. <clears throat> so we got the thanksgiving. We got the worship type of prayer. Petition. Uh, petition and intercessory type of prayer. Supplication. Thanksgiving. And then there's with Paul, it's talking about spiritual warfare. That's the deliverance type of prayers. You know, 
when we pray, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, when you really, that's, that's when you come to God and, and you just shut everything down and you come to him, just you and him face to face and you praying and declare, declaring and decreeing. Uh, you pulling down strongholds, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You finding every devil, every demonic spirit that is coming up against you. You praying, Lord, put on that whole armor. All of you, Lord, eh! you tell the Lord, be a fence, be a shield. Uh, that's when you going in. Hallelujah. Have you ever went in in prayer like that? Huh? Hallelujah. God, shut the mouth of the game, say. Huh? Hallelujah. Lord, you see what they trying to do to me? You going to let them do that, Lord? <laughs> you going in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the deliverance type of prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And then the last one is you want prayers of what I call Christ. I can't pronounce the word. Um, Contrition, which means uh, repentance types of prayer. You know you've fallen short. You know that you haven't been the person that you need to be. Oh Lord, uh, I, I've sinned, and I've sinned in your sight. Amen? Come to God with, with, with contrition. Follow me? God ain't looking for all them sackcloth and, and ashes. He's looking for an honest and a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Notice the Lord's Prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. It's also, it's, it's really the model prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in St. John, where Jesus is praying before he went to the cross. But anyway, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice we said, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, forgive us of our trespasses. See, you got to ask the Lord to forgive you of your trespasses. Huh? And, and do it how? As I forgive others of their trespasses. Uh, people trespass against us. Amen. They may trespass against you. But you got to forgive them. Amen? Or your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. Amen? We should not ever hold anything uh, against our brothers and our sisters. Nothing. I don't care what they do. That's, that's, all souls belong to God. Souls don't belong to you. Amen? And, and if you treat it that way, you can be free. Free in your worship. Amen? Free in your praise. Y'all with me? Yes. Lord, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive others that trespass against us. Yes. Notice, lead us not into temptation. Yes. Uh, in other words, that prayer, I had to study that out a while because that bothered me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Why would I pray for God not to lead me into temptation? Well, what that scripture is really saying is, is that, Lord, don't allow temptation to come to correct me. Don't allow the enemy to come to straighten me out. God uses evil for his good. God doesn't tempt you with evil. But he'll allow, if you keep fooling around, the enemy to do it who's willing to do it. He said, Lord, send me out of the kill. That's the devil. Huh? So he said, Lord, don't allow the devil don't put yourself in a position wherein God releases the devil on you. There was a there was a king that wasn't doing God's will. God said, I need a lying spirit. Be in the prophet's mouth. Spirit raises his hand. I'll be there. That's leading 
into temptation. Don't put yourself in a position wherein God start, stops pulling your protection, your hedge about you. Allowing the enemy more access to you. Just so that you can turn back to him. Lead us not into temptation, but you want God to always, always deliver you from evil. Put yourself in that position. That God is always delivering you from evil. In order for you to be in that position, you've got to pray. You've got to have a prayer life. You've got to be anointed. Amen? If you stop praying, you're going to be carnal. Carnal minded man is what? Unstable in how many ways? All his ways. All right, I didn't hit everything. There's individual prayer, there's group prayer. Perseverance, he said. And that, and that you got to pray with resolve, determination, resolution. Y'all with me? All right, I need everything. Pray in the spirit, <laughs> pray with the anointing. All right. I'm going to let y'all go. I hope y'all got something out of the Bible study tonight. Thank you, Jesus. See, people use it too fast. I love all of them. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Quinn, will you take our offering for us? First lady, put something in there for me. We won. Please? Amen. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm going across the world. We thank God for everybody <laughs> that has uh, come to be with us on tonight. We praise God for you. Uh, please forgive Pastor Quinn. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.